know, Kemi, what you said reminded me of um, OJB Jezreel, God rest his soul. Mm. He did a song, the song dissed me. <laughs> I mean, everybody knows the song. I don't know. Song. Exactly. Okay, let, okay, before I'm reminding <laughs> you of the song, he did a song, he produced a rugged man. Yeah. Rugged dissed Idris Abdul Karim. Yeah. And I told Idris, don't, re don't say a word. Uh, that got to him, he now got upset. Because he wanted Idris to talk back yeah. at him so that he can go back, so they can go back and forth. But then he got to know I was the one that advised Idris not to answer. He now said, eh, hey, okay, I'm a dis Kenny Ogungwe. Um, he now did the whole rugged man. Rugged Baba, yes. Okay. He now did the whole record and he dissed me. People were playing the song. Those that are not my friend, mm. they played the song. Those are my friends, they didn't play the song. The <laughs> but guess what? The beat of the song was a mad beat. Uh, I said, who produced this song? <laughs> I said, who is the producer? I had to go to Cool FM to search for the CD, get it to Cool FM, produced by, was Kandahar by Black Ink. They use yeah. black ink to, so, to so cover the cool. name. I said, Kai, I, I don't know who did this beat. I now try to ask, ask around. They say it was OJB. Ordinary person will have been mad at OJB. Ordinary person will have been upset. Why did you produce a song that dissed me? Everybody talking about. I called him. I said, what? How are you, OJB? He answered the phone. God rest his soul. I say, I have a project for you. Mm. You are producing an album for me. Mm. I love the beat, the one that, uh, <laughs> the one that, the one that you know. <laughs> then, you see, OJB now ended up producing Two Baba. Yes. And he produced African Coin. Mm. Wow. If I fought him mm. to say that he did a song that dissed me, I would have lost out on African Coin. Is there any way, any place, or any time that you feel? Is the word upset, anger, or whatever it is that I paved the way and everybody else is reaping the benefit? I don't get upset. Even I go out, some they see the greet, some they don't. It doesn't bother me. Because deep, deep inside of me, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with myself. I'm very happy with my career. I'm a, first and foremost a broadcaster in a lane luckily to have jammed people like Tubaba and other artists, and in a way to have created a brand new music for everybody, and everybody is reaping a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But come to think about it, I was an OAP doing a program. Now I have my own radio station. Mm -hmm. It is another story. Being a, an OAP, now controlling a radio station in this Lagos. Mm -hmm. And again, I have my own television station. It's in Abuja, it's in Jos, it's in Kaduna, it's in Enugu. It's when it gets to Lagos that they will know mm. Kenny's TV. Mm. I don't get upset because it's, I said I wanted to be close to him because I tapped a lot of anointing from what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I know Almighty God blessed me and blessed me really well, and I give God the praise. Music is something that we say river. Music is spiritual. For you to be able to understand anything spiritual, you yourself must be spiritual. Yeah. So if music is hot today, it's hot with you, tomorrow it may not be hot with you. Mm. Oh, if, if, if I'm not a successful broadcaster, mm. I will have been looking forward to what I can say I want to fall on. But broadcasting gives me joy. That's where I started from, before mm. knowing musicians. I didn't know all these musicians without broadcast plays. If you turn on a radio from 87.1, that's the beginning of the frequency, to 107.9, that's the end of frequency, you won't find a space. Hmm. You go from one station, Spanish station, English station, rock station, urban, beat, rhythm, jazz, jazz all the way till the end. And when I was in there 25, 30 years ago, I was like, I hope one day Nigeria will be like this. 
And I came back, I started the third FM station with High Chief Dokwesi. And at that particular time, about 23 years ago, today, there's no frequency available. <laughs> so I come to think about it, it was my prayer yeah. that I prayed when I was in college that when is Nigeria going to be ever be like this, that Almighty God will let Nigeria be like this. And it had now happened in my own lifetime. Mm. I'm so happy mm. and I bless God. So I don't get upset because I know I still have young artists that's working with me. I have Joel Amade, is the only artist, only. And people were asking, how come you don't sign or you don't, they don't know that to build a radio station, it takes up a lot of energy and if you sign any artist, it takes a lot of money. He can tell you. <laughs> so his ability to say, okay, you know, I don't want to spend my money on videos. I don't want to spend money on any other thing. I want to spend money to buy equipment, to buy radio equipment, to organize a radio station. And that was why I was a bit, I didn't produce. I didn't sign anybody. But I play music, I play them, I support them until now that the radio station is now on air. Now, you never can tell. I'm a music person. I'm a businessman. Mm. A chance can come. Another artist maybe came and sings. <laughs> <laughs> or raps. <laughs> or raps. <laughs> you know, you never can tell anything can and still happen. And again, we have a radio. Her, check out our music. Let Bess be in the Bess. All right. Yeah, man. Bess is my <laughs> <laughs> And you know now, it's not like a, you have to run around and try to paddy paddy. Mm. If it is your radio station that is playing your song, you have followers. Just like on your Instagram, people that they love you, they will always listen to you. Mm. Then you sell the music, there's no enough of energy to say you want to go up and down. No, no way. You just stick to what you know. People will come and they will support. Okay, yeah, um, it was frustrating for me because I, at the time, I, I don't think I was working hard enough. And what, what do I mean when I say that? I don't think I was exploring all my avenues and exploiting all my avenues. You know, I wasn't doing as much as the other people were doing. You know, the amount of videos they were putting out, I wasn't putting out, you know, so why should I be um, upset? And, you know, largely because it was, yeah, uh, right. you know, and there was a tendency to, to blame, you know, my, I mean, my label, you know, because of, uh, the, the lack of funding that was coming from it. But I, I understood that, listen, everything, you know, like what I was saying, everything is in your hands, you know. Sometimes it's not the music, you know. Like Files came into the industry, he tried with his music, and the music was growing, and then he switched to comedy, you know, and then that blew him up, and then he put the music in. There is always a way, you know. So I started something, Bear's Life, you know. I, I started a show, Bear's Life, booked Muriel Kunola, and did a show, and people were just like surprised <laughs> at the turnout. It was like amazing, it was like a festival. And without faith, I went to Abuja and did the same thing in Abuja, like three months later, and it was crazy, you know. So we're doing it again this December. And the thing is, when you work hard, when you look at what you want and where you want to go, you create a path, create a structure for it, and then work towards it, you, you surely get the results. You know, so I'm not, um, you know, I've, I've done well for myself and uh, there's been a lot of income that has come through. Uh, there's more to come. And I just believe that the, the harder I work, the, the, more, the more I'll get, that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll do music. <laughs> I'll do music, you know. Uh, may, maybe something else like design. I don't want to go into story of, you know, how I used to make shirts for people when I was in secondary school and sell it, go to Tony Tigana and CMS, you know. But that was also a part of my process. But I believe um, if I wasn't doing music, I'll be doing something like design, you know, like industrial design, maybe shoes or something, something interesting. But it, it will always be music. I've learned to um, trust in God. You know that God is um, the source of everything. You know that I've been doing, everything I've been looking for. You know, um, in in large parts of my career, I didn't really know where I was heading. I didn't really know what my purpose was, but I was so blessed because I was getting results for somebody who was so absent of knowledge of you know what you were doing and what have you. And I've been so favored. You know. Um, 
and it's and it's all the Lord's doing, you know. So I've learned to trust God. So every time when I, when I pray, I pray for God to build my faith, so I can have a better relationship with Him. Um, and that's pretty much it. Because I mean, everything that I've been given, like my kids, my family, the things that are so special, the things that made me, you know, make so many sacrifices. Because all the sacrifices I've made is because of my future. And and my particular states, I don't really do anything for myself. I do stuff for my family, mm. you know. So um, I'm like the custodian of this family. You know, I have the responsibility, and um, I can't do it alone. You know, sometimes the baggage is heavy. It's not the things. It's, it's not like the ephemeral things. Like oh yeah, you know, like. Um, the things that, you know, you're a famous person, or you're, it's not about those things, it's, you know, I'm the custodian of emotions, of, you know, of future, of the future of these kids, you know, and what have you. So that's really what's important for me. And the fact that I have the privilege to still have the talent to make, you know, songs that people will like is even an additional bonus. Mm. You know, so for me, you know, I've just learned to just trust in God and, you know, just be more responsible with what I've been given and, you know, just make, you know, my loved ones proud and, you know, just build my relationship with God pretty much. So, okay, so um, two years ago, uh, we, we lost a baby uh, and it wasn't like a miscarriage or anything, you know. My wife actually gave birth and then we lost the baby like uh, some hours later, you know, and that... You know, you know, like how you say death makes you grow up. You know, I lost my dad when I was young, and then there's there's another death when when you're when you're much older. And then you know, I always thought, ah, losing a baby is not. You don't know this baby now. <laughs> you know, you know. But then when you have to go through that emotion and actually try, bury the baby, you know, and all of that, you you find out that it's it's an emotion that is as strong, you know, as losing somebody that you've known all your life. Uh, but there's the, the, for me, there was always light at the end of the tunnel because, first of all, I dealt with death before and just the belief that, you know, there's always a brighter day, you know. So, so deal, dealing with it, you know, and having my, my wife, you know, I, I, I think at, at that time, you know, I was actually even concerned with, with her, you know. Because she, she had never faced anything like that before, you know, and I think it was even more emotional for her. So I think my, my job at the time was to make her feel great, make her feel better, you know, and encourage her as much as possible. And when that was done, you know, we went into a deeper level of knowing God. And there was all the answers out there in the air for us, you know, with revelations and different things, you know. So... Um, Right now we look back and it's just amazing, <laughs> you know, how you're able to deal with something like that, you know, and it goes back to the, you know, to, to the fact that God is very, very real in my family and, you know, we don't take that for granted, you know, he's, he's always there and, and he's, he's helped to heal. How was it welcome your son? Yeah. Say it again. When you welcomed your son. Yeah, I mean, that was amazing, <laughs> you know, for the first uh, few days. I know. <laughs> For the first few days, I didn't know how to feel about, you know, having a, a child, you know, and then this, this guy is there. You know, like, I, you know how people say, you know, you feel joy, you know, but like, I, I didn't know how I felt. You know, it was later on I started, you know, bonding with the guy and then, you know, his whole emotions and then he's a fantastic guy. So... I mean, um, it's, it's different things for different people. Sometimes you feel amazing joy at the beginning. Sometimes it comes and builds, you know, but for me it was, the, the joy, you know, came gradually, you know, but it, it's amazing to be a father. And like Nato said, you know, you, you see that there's so much more <laughs> than even you. You know, I was telling someone that when he came, he just felt like, ah, they've just phased me out. I'm just version 2.0. I mean, this guy is version 2.0, and I'm like the old version. You know, so as much as possible, I had to get better, you know, because I'm like, this guy has to grow up and say, man, my dad was the baddest or is the baddest. You know, so yeah. it pushes you to even get better because this guy has to, 
you know, you have to give something, and you can't give what you don't have, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, that was it. I'm very, like, with my kids, um, like, I'm ready to sacrifice anything for my kids. It's not about, it stopped being about me a long time ago. You understand? Um, and, you know, um, I just want to be, like, the best father possible, you know, and I want to be able to create um, a situation whereby, you know, these kids can thrive, you know, where I can be there for them, where I can, you know, just inspire them and get to love them uh, more than, you know, I felt I was loved as a kid because, I mean, there's a generational shift. Like my father, <clears throat> my father missed a lot of my growing up, but my mother was there. You know, she was there the whole time, you know. And, but I, I, I didn't understand why my dad wasn't there, you know. And now, it, my dad is much older, but it's so uncomfortable to have that conversation. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you know, like, what's up? <laughs> you understand? And my father, my father dodges, like, emotional, but he came up in, 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 a, in a weird space in time. Mm. When, when my father was born, his mother died when he was born, um, and his father, my father was a seminarian, and when his father was sick, um, his father asked him to come back. And by the time he came back, it was just a messed up situation. So um, my grandfather, you know, was cheated because he wasn't educated, you know, so my father had a lot of resentment, you know, like 30, 40 years, we had to rebury uh, grandparents, you know, so my father grew up very traumatized, you know, so a lot of things, you know, affected him and what he could give to his family. And for me, I'm like, man, I have to do better. I have to do better with these kids, you know, so I'm just all about my kids. But most, the, my kids have brought me closer to God. That's the most important thing that I can stress. They brought me closer to God and they have made me realize that I have something important to give and share, not just with um, my family, but with everybody. You know, some of us, like when the traffic lights and you see those kids that are begging mm. and they look so dirty and you cringe and you don't want to look at them and what have you. And there was a long time that used to be me because I used to feel like, you know, like, I don't know how to feel about this moment, but, you know, just having my kids and being so lucky with my kids, I'm just, you know, I just adopted a new approach, like, yeah. man, these kids are like my kids, man. You know, they're just underprivileged, you yeah. know, so it just made me love more, made me care more, you know. Um, sometimes when you have kids, your wife starts becoming less important, you know, <laughs> and, you know, it, I can't allow that happen. <laughs> you know, so. I, Everybody, I've treated everybody the same, but it's too hard <laughs> because my wife is, is my wife is amazing. My son, I know your wife is amazing. my son is, my son is just a football fanatic. At his son? age, he's four. Kids, and my daughter is so beautiful <laughs> that sometimes I get worried. I'm just like, oh hell no, you know. I'm just like. I'm like, <laughs> like I'm just ready. So, so family life has just like I was when I was doing music. I was just like, okay, I like this music, but I've now realized there's something by far greater than everything I've ever looked for, and I'm just like, hey, these people have got me now, <laughs> because I'm just like, you know, my mood button is so big <laughs> that I it's like it. I just always press it. <laughs> I press it. I can't do anything again. <laughs> You know, like, and when they press it, I'm not thinking about a song, I'm not thinking about a verse or nothing. Before I, you know, like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this bar like this and this. No, like, they just touch that thing. I'm just like, hey. <laughs> you know, so, but I am in love. I'm just so happy and I'm so blessed, which is why I got closer to um, God, which is why I want Obi to sort himself out. <laughs> oh, my God. How did I <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I found greater purpose, and it's not just about my kids, it's also about appreciating other people more, mm. and, you know, learning how to be, 
a better person in general. You know, that love that we have in our home, we can take that love out, you know, understand, and share to other people and do good things with it. There's not really much to add. Uh, I share the sentiments. Um, life is a gift. Family is... If I had... Um, we had to wait six and a half years for, you know, for uh, our child. Um, and if you had asked me before my son arrived if I was happy, I would have told you yes. And I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have been lying. Uh, but once he showed up, it was like a whole different level of joy, a whole completely. It, it was well, some. No, if if no, he would have said if yes. someone had asked me if I was oh, okay. I was happy before you know uh, our son came, I would have said yes, and I would have been totally been truthful. Why? Because um, I I I didn't get married to have a child. I didn't get married to start a family. I got married to I got married because I wanted. Okay, I got married because I was tired of. Watching her go, Hi. right? She comes in and she has to leave. This kind of yarn. If I tell my wife, so I didn't get married because I wanted a family. Mm -hmm. I got married because I was tired of watching you leave. Hi. <laughs> Come on. Right hand. Right hand. Right hand. Right hand. Right hand. Right hand. Is here. Is no, no. Wow. I wasn't ready for it. So, but it was just hard, you know, that she has to come and she has to go back because, I mean, we're not married, so we can't be living together. So there were visits, and I, I couldn't deal with the visits. So I'm like, okay, if, wait, if we, if we get married, you go stay, happy. you're not going to go again, they come back, say yes, okay. So we got married, and mm. I was very happy. I, I, I was the luckiest guy. I got married to the absolute most amazing woman anywhere. Uh, but we we had some you know challenges mm -hmm. with you know childbearing, uh, one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, and we we were cool. No, nobody panicked. Nobody you know lost any composure. Nobody in the immediate family. What about external? Oh no no I um I, I didn't get to tell you that I um you 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 no no. Everybody knew better than to play that game with me, you know. You look into I was, I was, you, you just knew, you, you could get together and say don't, stuff, don't talk about but that. no one person, no one from top to bottom had the guts, still have the guts to walk up to me and stay, I was officially, uh, I was officially the madman of the family. You knew better <laughs> than to, med I mean, if I liked to drink water, you knew better than to tell me what kind of water to drink or when not to drink water, right? So, so you know, it was it was clear, and uh, and it was something I'd mastered growing up. I'd mastered this, you know, this kind of you you create an uh, aggressive, you know, post you 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 create. Posterior, yeah. So people just stayed the hell away. They don't even try to come close to find out if you're vulnerable, if you're nice. If they just they just gave you some space. And of course, worry boy, now they want to me, right? So. So they, 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 you know, we, we, we managed it very well. I, I mean, kudos to, to uh, my wife. She was strong. She was brave. Uh, all that normal stuff you see running from pillar to post, from one uh, spiritualist to one soothsayer, you know, none of that stuff. Uh, so, we, so our son eventually came, 2008, uh, March 12th. And we were... And sometimes I sit down this and I ask myself, the guys, you know what, these absentee dads, right, do they have a clue what, what they're doing to themselves, right? Because you, you leave the child alone with the mother and all of that. You think you, are, for whatever reason, but you're basically robbing yourself. Just watching my son grow from a three-month-old to a six-month-old to a one-year-old. I was just telling Nate to see, when he was about two, he, he would call me like, daddy, daddy, daddy. A community for you, a com you know, and we had bits and pieces of that, you know, on 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 camera. We shot, just watching this guy grow. He's nine, 
as we speak, is nine now. You can't, you can't win an argument against him. <laughs> he corrects my English. He, you know, he, the mom says something and he goes, Mommy, I, I don't think that's the correct pronunciation. You know, he, so just going back home to him, and when, when I cannot be home, I called, asked them to bring him out. And they said, no, your, your sister wants to, I said, see, you don't understand. It's like an addiction. If you don't bring him to me, I won't function here. I need to see him. Let me just spend some time. Let him be in my, awkward and breathless. He was in my room. Comes out, rehearsal, whatever. Every time he's not in school, you know, and I'm working. So the, the kids are they're such huge blessings. What's the difference from the way you were raised to the way you are raising your son? Or is it different? Um, Yes, yeah, significantly. Um, I was very lucky the first 11 years. Uh, a lot of love, a lot of attention, my mom. Uh, then I moved over to my father's place, and I had to scramble for attention. One of 23 kids, you know, all kinds of women, and all kinds of stuff. So uh, we had money, big houses, big cars, but, you know, my father and I had a troubled relationship. You know, my father never really knew me. So we had this distance, you know, between us emotionally. And there are times I, I, I kind of rebelled. There are times I made trouble deliberately just to get attention. Mm -hmm. the, the things I did, not from my heart, but just so that, so that they would just know, say, you know, I know you can't chance me, that kind of, you know, stuff. So um, what I tried to do is I, I tried to ensure that every negative experience in my life um, I, 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 the useful lessons to learn. So while, while I, I grew up in a polygamous family, it, it also ha has given me a clear-cut idea in practical terms what, how important the balance is, right? How important to have a wife, to have a family, that they, they're not sitting down thinking they have to compete for your attention. They don't think they have, there's no, because again, when, when a woman is comfortable if you give a woman a, a reason to to believe that you know she's comfortable she would merge into you completely and she she would die for you if you create the impression that you have another life you have another setting you have another arrangement that excludes her she becomes self-protective by instinct and it's that self-protection that creates all the problems that you deal with in, in, in a marriage. I'm not a marriage counselor, but I can tell. I have friends who are married, I have family members, you know, and I know that the key difference between what we have and what I see is the fact that there's conscious effort for us to, to create that, that reality that we are family. We would ride together. Luckily, we, we started out when, when I didn't have a family. When you know, so there are no no illusions. We 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 are from, mm -hmm. as in, Ground zero. the story I told you about the lady who, um, the the lady who where we bought food and all of that. Yeah. A few years after, the lady that eventually become my wife, set up a restaurant you know, on the other side, right of uh, 70B Allen, where 70D. Um, so she she had a restaurant around there, and a lot of you know my guys and all of that would. So we basically moved to this fist corner. And the first real close conversation we had was one day she called me and she said, dude, um, all due respect, don't get, don't get it wrong. I like the business. I like the, the money that you, know, you guys pay. But I, I just wanted to ask, how much do you earn? I, I don't understand. You know, like one, two, three, just she brought out a notebook. On your bill, on you, on you, on you, on you. So many people come in here and have lunch, they have dinner on you. How much do you earn? How do you? And I almost died laughing. I'm like, okay, don't worry about it. We, you know, we have our means and all of that. <laughs> but for someone who was making profit of my, my crew, my baggage, my hangers on, to feel some measure of concern enough to tell me, dude, you, you have to streamline. I mean, if you're not making this woman, you don't have to feed so many people, right? It, it, it made an impression. And we're not even friends then. We're just, you know, like the lady who 
ran the yeah. restaurant that was close to our office and all of that. So, if, when, so you can imagine when we eventually become friends, then we eventually become lovers, then we eventually become husband and wife, right? Um, um, <laughs> you, know, you can imagine the, 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 the quality of protection you can get from someone like that, if from just a bystander, you know, to your wife. So I, I, I have been really, really blessed. I think that I do a lot of stuff, um, a, a lot of stuff. I do a huge amount of stuff, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> seriously. Um, you, you probably, would, my name will pop within confusion around talent management, talent management, you know, over and over again because, of course, Two of us is such a is such a huge brand. So once you're affiliated with him, everything everything else that you do, you know, is overshadowed completely by the fact that you 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 have a bit, you know, Tubaba. I mean, I I, I run a production company, Pop Quite Media Network. I run a, I run an experiential marketing agency. You know, I do a lot of stuff. Right. However, if if I didn't have the kind of wife that I was lucky to have. I, I'm, I understand when, you know, you, you, in America, when you, there's a divorce and, you know, they're saying uh, you're a basketball player at the NBA or something and they say you have to split it, you know, 50-50. And you're saying, I got, God, well, let me play the basketball now. Let me go training, you know. Dude, if my wife was not what she's been, I would not have been able to, attempt to chase 80% of the things I've chased, mm -hmm. not to even mention achieve them. The courage to sit down and say, okay, on to the next one, uh, book quiet and breathless, on to the next one. I want to create Just Chilling, you know, as a franchise. I want to create this. I want to set up an agency. I want to pitch for this. We, I wouldn't even be able to do it. So I think it's very important, uh, particularly in this business of ours, to find someone who believes in you completely, who supports you completely? Who? I was, I was telling a friend, uh, a colleague of mine, a few days ago. I remember last week that I borrowed money from my wife to shoot um, a music video for uh, a thoroughbred street hop over a decade and a half ago. And I just remember that I've not paid the money back. <laughs> <laughs> We're out, like 25K. I was going on location, and I figured that there probably will be things that you know we'll meet on location that we're not prepared for. So I'm like, I'm going on location, and I, I, I don't have cash. And she went somewhere, pulled out 25K. Somewhere up the stairs. Right? Mm -hmm. And I went on location, and of course, as expected, we got there. This needed to be sorted out, that needed to be sorted out. And you know, we, we shot the video. Imageko, you know, did the post production, we put it out there. And throughout the course of those coins, I never had to sit down with the thoroughbreds to say, this is a, uh, okay, I directed the video, but I also, you know, paid for A, B, C, D. You know, so we, we never discussed on the refund until uh, Elijo and I were talking about uh, his performance at Buckwell and Breathless and Styley, 10th anniversary. They, you know, so I, I called my wife and asked you, that, that money that time, you know, <laughs> as in, like how far, they say, you know, you, you, never, you, never, you never paid it back. Okay, um, my wife, she's a lovely lady. I met her when I wasn't on Ray Power or AIT. I met her when I was on uh, OGBC2 and just a one hour program. And she doesn't really listen to OGBC2 then. And again, we got married. It was three years after wedding that we have our first daughter. So uh, when you said six years, mm -hmm. I was. Okay, me, I thought three years. Uh, it was, was too much, but yeah, six years, it's, it's not an easy thing. Try, you, know? Know? you try, you know, but to God be the glory. She's 18 wow. this year. She's uh, in sophomore wow. in yeah. Texas A&M. Are you like daddy? Like, um, <laughs> you like, um, you like <laughs> Next year, she'll be junior. I mean, she graduated when she was 16. And again, to God be the glory. I have two boys. They are twins. Mm. I don't call them Taiwo and Kende, just like uh, myself. 
I give them a common name, <laughs> Calvin and Kevin. I felt Kai is like Ta and K is like Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are so amazing. You know, it's not easy to have twins, especially when there are two boys. Mm. They are so energetic. If you get A, you must get B, yeah. unless you have to certify it. <laughs> <laughs> And they watch raw too much <laughs> that they practice raw. <laughs> and funny enough, w, I'm friends. telling you, funny enough, one is so big yeah. and one is slim. Yeah. So I have to beg the I said, leave this boy here. <laughs> 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 wow. You are, you are right, you are right. Uh, to, to be honest, I've recorded over 80 albums of new Nigerian music. No record label in Nigeria, in Ghana, in anywhere in, in Africa that can say they've recorded 80 albums in the past 15, 17 years. And again, a lot of energy went into that when we started, people don't even accept it. We had to beg them. They say, oh, what are you doing? Go and do Fuji music now. Can you see Shino Peters? You make a lot of money. Go and do Fuji. But we were so adamant. We, we, this is what we wanted to do. And we were stuck to what we wanted to do. We gave them records. They, they, they don't even pay, just like the magazine. You pay and you come back again. You give them another one. They pay for the one you gave them before, before, before things, before now. And again, now social media has taken over. If you go through what um, the industry went through and you try to think, it's crazy. I don't think about it. Mm. I do not. But I appreciate people. I appreciate everybody. People don't know me. People that they don't know me, they can't say anything about me. Mm. If you throw the question to people here, so you like any or you don't like any. Half may say they like, half may say they don't because of what I've done. I believe it's a, if it's A, I will die that it's A. You can't change my mind, you can't change my heart, and I don't care what anybody says. I just get stuck to it. That's why it's so hard when you try to see and you try to gauge me. You don't know me, you don't gauge me. Mm. Don't talk about me. I mean, I can't stop that. I mean, I'm on TV every weekend. People will say, oh, they, they talk. I mean, Kevin, well, you're still talking about so many years ago. And again, you were talking about AIT yeah, yeah. Jams. And Aya was talking about Coca-Cola Top 10 Countdown. When I hear those things, those are the things that, that, that make me happy. I don't look at, oh, we created a boss, two Baba, Europe Music TV Awards, Chadel O. Oh, the whole world got to know about Nigerian music. And again, we did so much. No. Because I know it's NFL, not National Football League, but not for long. Mm. And that is what everybody needs to know. You are as good as your last song, last gig. as your last gig. Mm. If you are an OAP, you are as good as your last performance. If you are a TV person, you are as good as your last production. If we understand that, that will give a lot of energy into us to make things real, to make things proper, not to deceive people, not to let people think, oh, I did this, I'm the one, you should give me an award, you should respect me. I don't, because I'm a straightforward person. I'm happy, and to God be the glory. They've gotten loads and loads of awards. Definitely. I mean, while, while we're talking on the table, I, rem I remember something. I, I, I was always hearing the word passion, passion. I always related it to love, which is, which in, in some sense is true, but I was relating it to love romantically. And then we mentioned the Grammy trip that we had, and it was when I was on that Grammy trip with them and listening to them talk about passion, because then they had J1 at that point, and we, I forgot what we were talking about, but we, the, the word passion came up, and they described it to me in a different light in terms of what we do. You know, if you chase money and you do something for money, you're never going to get it. And it wasn't until that conversation I understood that, because I always thought the point was to get paid. Hmm. 
But then Kenny they won't broke it to me. They broke it down in the sense that you, if you chase money, you you will always chase that money. But if you do something from your heart, if you do it because you're passionate about it, you won't even need to chase the money. You, the money will come and find you, and then you put that money to work. You know, so I mean, living here today, and and like you said, being smack in the middle of the new school and the new buzz is is one of the things that a lot of people lack. They, they don't, they're not doing it for the passion. Mm. They're doing it for the airtime, they're doing it for publicity, they're doing it for the gram, you know, and then they wonder why tomorrow they're no more. Because it, it didn't come from the heart. You, want, you wanted to get the money, you got the money for that moment, but that money is now gone, so guess what? You're, on, you're, you're now on the, on the road again for So uh, one thing I really want people to take away is, you know, do, do it for the passion. Do it because you love it. If you don't love it, you don't find the love for it, don't do it. Don't, don't put your, because you put yourself under unnecessary pressure. And that's where the whole fake lifestyle comes in play. That's where, you know, you're doing things that are not even in your personality. If you do something for the passion, you make it work. You know what I'm saying? Like, you will, it, it becomes you. You know, like, if I wasn't DJing, I don't know.